In this tutorial of Space Claim, I'll walk you through how to take this STL file and construct a solid body on top of it. Now, if I go to the Display tab and show the mesh, generally this is a very clean mesh. There's a couple of areas where some of the facets stick up a little bit. That's one of them. Uh, there's one over here, but these are really un inconsequential. We're not going to worry about those. For starters, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I can double click on a facet and grab a, a chain of many facets and then start constructing a sketch right on top of that. Now I want to take this third button and move my sketch grid just in the blue direction a little bit so I'm able to see a pretty good cross section of it and get the entire uh, outline. One thing you'll notice, uh, things do come in fairly clean. I've got a lot of green lines, which means those are lines that Space Claim is interpreting. Anything that's in blue is generally an arc. I think a lot of these should be lines, but they're showing up as line arc combinations. So what I'm getting at is it may not be the best idea to try to do a box select around all those those curves that Space Claim has fit and copy and paste them. Instead what I'll do is just draw in some sketches to help me build geometry around it. I'm going to start by drawing a, a couple of rectangles just around the perimeter. I'm only going to, uh, well, well both points are actually going to pick on the green edges but I'm not looking to get something exact quite yet. Just a, a rough shape and it doesn't really matter for that matter how close I am. Four rectangles total, one for the large body itself and then three rectangles for the th the three different cutouts. This one over here, let's just make a rectangle that looks like that so it's not even extending to each of the edges. So you might be wondering, with something this rough, how is it possible to construct something accurate around it? We'll go into the pull tool. Uh, if I hide the mesh, it's really the main surface body in the middle that I want to start pulling on. And we'll pull it an arbitrary distance for now to give it some kind of thickness. Bring back the mesh and that surface body that still exists, we don't need that. So we'll go ahead and delete it. Um, but this is where it really gets it gets quick. If I go into the pull tool and click on this up to button until there's a bold outline around it, now this becomes sticky. That means anytime I click on a face, I can immediately click on a facet to which that face needs to go up to. So I'll do the same thing here. Click on a face, facet, and it's really just a plug and jug operation at this point of clicking on faces and facets. If you can't find that face too easily, roll up on the wheel. That's query select. Then it becomes selectable. Then go ahead and click on the facet of your choice, the facet that you want. All right, so you can see that that goes through fairly quickly. Got a couple more to do. And I think I'm looking good on the top. Uh, do I need to do the back side. Go down and get the bottom cavity as well. We'll roll up on the wheel to find that facet to snap it up to, and I've got one more. Roll up on the wheel, and I'm done. So the general shape of this I now have. One thing you might want to do is the top three surfaces may not all be the same height. So I could click on any two of them and snap them up to the same height as one. So one of them's my master, and the other two are the slaves, if you will. You can think of it that way. Now, two more things to do. I want to put the holes in the model. Well, let's click on a face and go into a sketch mode. Now, I won't spend a whole lot of time with uh, this first one, but if I rotate my view, I'll double click on that red arrow, 90 degrees. You can see this is some kind of a threaded hole, so maybe this is something that you know ahead of time, the size of it. You could use our standard hole wizard and go ahead and plop a hole right on top of that face. If you didn't know what it is, you could take a measurement of it. What I'm going to do is just measure the threads, uh, the distance from, we'll call it point to point. So if I make a vertical line, and let's zoom in a little bit and terminate it right around here, the length of that line if I go click on it, it tells me that it is 36 thousandths. Now let's, let me pull up my calculator on my PC. If I do 1 divided by 36 thousandths, that tells me I'm getting somewhere around 27 threads per inch. Now I know there's not a thread that's uh, that exact size, but I could probably find one that is uh, very close to that. And maybe my measurement was off a little bit. So then you could go into the standard hole tool, UNC probably want something like a, we'll start with a 10 by 24. Click on that face 
and then go ahead and stick it uh, really anywhere for that matter because when you exit out now you want to use the move tool and actually put it uh, in the correct location so let's go into a 3D mode because I'm still in the sketch mode so I could say red direction up to and then click on the green face and that should center it on the green face in that red direction. Let's do the same thing now in the green direction and center it on that face. So it's not quite centered on the on that face as I thought, but that's okay. You get the idea. You could go into a cross section and center it that way and do the same thing with the other two holes. Now what I want to transition to are the six holes on this surface and the six holes over there as well. If I click on the planar face and go into a cross section mode let's drop the cross section down a little bit uh, the same kind of thing as before when I first started to create this I don't have enough data to be able to reuse that and let space claim attempt to fit curves in fact none of those 12 circles are showing up as complete circles so that just it's simple it just means I need to take an extra step in the way of recreating some three-point circles now I'm going to do every other one instead of drawing all uh, six of them here I just need to do every other one and in doing so I will have established a center point if I draw a three-point circle around the small circles I just made I've established a center point so what I want to do now is rotate these all three of them and not just rotating them if I go into the move tool yes that's what I want uh, let's make sure this is right on the center I drag that blue knob hold down the control key and start rotating now you're making a copy and we want the copy to go right about there, 300 degrees. If you're not on it exactly, that's okay. You can always type in 300. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Go back into Select and delete the large circle because that's all I want are the six small ones. All right, let's go into, uh, let's hide this the, the mesh and the solid and go into uh, the pull tool. Those three surfaces, I'm sorry, those six surfaces, go into the pull tool and use the pull both sides this will just ensure that I've got enough clearance in any given uh, in both directions and I'll pull them well beyond where they're supposed to go now let's bring back the original solid to and maybe I'll change the color a quick way to do that is to go into the select tool click on a face and you should have a small uh, toolbox pop up I can change it to orange it's just gonna make things a little easier to see I wanna make a copy of those uh, six cylinders, I want to make them over to the right hand side. Here's the easiest way to do it. Go into the move tool. If you do a box select of those of those six uh, solids, just select at least one face of them. Small arrow down here that says select parents. If you click up once, now it has all six solids selected in the tree. Let's make sure that we're moving in the right direction. If I click the move direction tool, click any of these edges that define the direction I want to go in so here's the order of operations click the red arrow click up to hold down the control key at this point because you want to make a copy then click this face and it should make a copy of all six of those over to that other face now I want to make sure these are in the correct orientation so let's go back into the move tool select those We'll go up on my uh, up select once, make sure I have the body selected, and rotate these 90 degrees. Really, any value should suffice so long as there's um, there's two cylinders at the quadrants in, I guess it would be the Y direction, according to this Y direction over here. All right, now the very last step to do is to chop away material from the orange blocks using the green cylinders. For that, we want to go into the Combine tool. Really simple way to use this. Click the orange box. That's what we want to cut up. What's doing the cutting? Well, it's these cylinders. Before I select those, there's an option over here, Keep Cutter. Yours is probably checked. Go ahead and deselect it like mine is. We'll do a big box select around all those cylinders. Once you let go, they disappear. Those are the cutters. You took that option off, Keep Cutter. Now, the third option is select regions to remove. Do, do another big box select around all 12 of those cylindrical cutouts, and those disappear. And we should have what we're looking for. Now, go back to the select tab, or select tool, go into mesh, and maybe, maybe grab any face and go into a uh, sketch mode. And let's drop our sketch down so we can clearly see the holes that we made. 
and just verify that, that the holes actually go through the circles uh, that I intended them to and they look pretty good to me so that's just a uh, quick tutorial on how to take an STL file and build a solid body around it getting the uh, getting the exact precision you want looks like I missed a little face over here that's alright I could always use the up to tool and I think I've got everything just about done so thanks for watching